many times I forget to press the record button. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right, excellent. So thank you for joining us in this focus group. First of all, the main thing that we want to do is really a heartfelt apology Mm -hmm. not to communicate with you during the summer for all the changes that we were planning on doing. Okay. Some of the changes were uh, anticipated. Some of the changes were late coming. All right. But the summer was, as you can imagine, a little busy <laughs> around mm -hmm. here and we really forgot to communicate these changes to to all the families in a in a in a good um, appropriate way okay so we want to to apologize for that so a lot of things change during the the summer at the beginning of the school year and we feel that you know in 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 um, in some ways those were not communicated correctly okay it wasn't our intention we didn't try to hide anything of course it was just that trying to do a youth summer retreat in the middle of the summer right before the beginning of the school was kind of hectic <laughs> oh, all right and anyways so let me tell you a little bit about what what do we anything else peter that you want to add on that or uh, um just one little one little clarification on on um on these students who are auditing these classes and the and the and how we are referring to them there are two there are two types of students and uh do you mind if i share that go ahead mm -hmm. okay yeah. most of these most of you are former power hour students. And that's kind of how you would call yourself. Oh, I'm a power hour student. In fact, when they came to the retreat, we were still doing that. Are you, were you a power hour student? Oh, were you an AHS online student? And we realized really quickly that this is not going to work very well with them joining in on the same live discussion, which is what we intended and what we wanted with them feeling like they're two, um, two really distinct groups uh, with different titles, different names, we want them to feel and to be AHS online students. And so all of our students are AHS online students when they graduate from Power Hour. Uh, last year, they didn't graduate from Power Hour to a, to a middle high school uh, group. They, 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 they were in another middle high school Power Hour class together. This year, they're, they, we've decided to merge these two groups. They're the same age as students. They developed really great relationships at this retreat. We could see that. And that connection was important. And it's important to us as we grow this program for the 712 students that there is some um, simplicity in, in, that, in, in, in that definition definition of what we offer and, and how we refer to those students. And so from now on, you'll hear us just, uh, these students will be age, you know, students of AHS online or AHS online students. If the distinction is needed, like in this case, we're speaking to a specific subset of an AHS online student. We'll call the, this group uh, AHS online students that are auditing class. If we were talking to students who were taking it for credit, we would say AHS students who are taking courses for credit. We might even say AHS online auditing students or AHS online for credit students. And, uh, and so those, those, that, that'll be how we refer to, to these students. And that's gonna take some time. It's hard to get names and brands and titles out of people's heads once you've cemented them. It's also um, somewhat emotionally difficult for a student because they identify with something. Um, they, many of these students became a group that was surrounded about, some, about something called Power Hour last year. And so that's, that, that, that symbolizes something to them. It, it reminds them of their experience that they had, the class, the relationships that they formed. And so we don't, we don't discount the fact that that's difficult to do, but we also know that it's easier to do it early, as early as we possibly can. And so moving forward, our K-6, meh, K-8, there's a little bit of an overlap there, right? For students who don't know whether they wanna be in the power hour 
program or the AHS online program. Uh, but we will refer to them as power hour students for that K-8 group, just like last year, and AHS online students um, from now on. Does that make sense? Any questions about that? Okay. Okay. So let me share, let me share my screen here and, and um, kind of have a presentation kind of to explain exactly this. First off, I wanted to uh, show you the mission of American Heritage School. So the reason why we start always with this is because of all the organizations that I have worked at, this one is the most aligned organization that I've ever seen to their mission statement, okay? I've worked 16 years for the church in physical facilities and information systems. And the church is very aligned to its uh, purpose and mission. But American Heritage School has such a clear and compelling mission statement that really that is what guides the things that we do all the time. All right. Particularly, this uh, statement here of developing the academic knowledge and the skills, oops, sorry, and the skills necessary to be able to make self-education a lifelong pursuit. That is, that is the, the, the main nut that we want to crack, okay? How do we help our students, your children, to love learning and to see learning as a lifelong pursuit, as something that they want to do all the time, okay? And so that is, that is the thing that, that is uh, driving us to make a lot of the things that, that we needed to, to, to consider for changes, okay? So let me explain why we made changes. Like Peter was explaining, we want um, to find better ways to motivate students. Mm -hmm. Hi. I don't think they knew that they were okay. needed. There we go. All right. So we want to find better ways to motivate students to make self-education a lifelong pursuit. That is the number one purpose that, that we have. We believe that the students participation during the live classes is evidence of self education and learning. All right, so we want the live classes to have as much participation from the students as possible. We really believe that the role of the learning coach should be coaching, not teaching or lecturing during the live class. So we, we want as much as possible to see the students commenting, asking questions, answering questions to one another and so on. Okay, and the coaches are there kind of guiding the discussion, but not being the discussion it themselves. One of the things that we observed last year was that the larger middle school power hour live classes had more student participation than the smaller middle school classes, okay? So, you know, and that, that may be just a function of, you know, however many students that are less shy and more talkative than others that you have in a larger group. So you have a larger group, chances are you are going to have less shy people joining that larger group, okay? We want to promote the student participation and engagement on the topics of the lesson during the live classes. We really want to make those live classes be a meaningful learning experience. Not just fun, not just entertainment, not just a, a time to socialize, but really a time for learning, discussing, and, and having a learning experience, okay? That is what we, we want to accomplish. 
we also, like Peter mentioned, saw the integration of all the students during the summer youth retreat. We really witnessed that. And so we wanted to keep that and promoting that instead of, um, you know, having two groups of online students, we wanted to see how about if we merge them together, really. And so because of that, these are the things that we changed from last year, okay? First of all, we developed a new set of middle school courses using the curriculum and the lessons from some of our best family school online courses for all the middle school students. So that is where we have zoology and impossible to silence and so on. Those are the courses that we decided to develop this year. We also changed the way that we produce the videos for the lessons. Instead of having, you know, Dr. Pablo ad living a video lesson, making mistakes, getting confused with words and mispronouncing <laughs> things and so on. Okay, it's much better to have a scripted content, okay, that would give a better quality, a more uniform quality of the videos. So very, very important and, and useful change. We also decided to shorten the length of the video lessons to concentrate on what is most important. We divided the videos into each part of the four R's. So we have a video for research, another video for reason, another one for relate, and usually just the assignments for record, okay? And then the most visible change to, uh, to you probably is that we join the Power Hour middle school classes with the AHS online classes and the purpose was to drive more student participation and better coaching. That is the whole reason why we did that, okay? In, in the few classes that we have had already, I think that that is happening, okay? But we are still, you know, trying to work the kinks out, okay? Also, another big change was that we deliver now the content of the courses for middle school students through Canvas instead of through the family school online website, okay? So that was also kind of a, a big, big surprise, I guess, but you know, that was a big change. Mm -hmm. I hope that it wasn't too traumatic uh, we haven't heard of anyone uh, being suicidal about it, but it was, you know, introduction to a new software, new way of doing things and so on. Okay. And we, on top, integrated Delphinium software, which is the learning dashboard that you see in Canvas. And this software is with the intent to improve the navigation in the course and the motivation of the students, okay? So that is the reason why we have this software. So these are the changes that we have made, okay? So next is, do you have any feedback, questions, anything that you want us to tell about these changes so far? Mm -hmm. And, and while you're sharing thoughts and, and people are commenting, feel free to use the chat. Uh, we'll, we'll record the chat as well. And, and so where there might not be enough time to share all the thoughts, um, uh, there should be plenty of opportunity to, to just chat. Um, I've got some surveys as well that maybe we'll launch that you can write in um, and answer something, some, some, of these, some of these things. And you have your hand raised, aha. Uh -huh. I do, um, and and I and I hope I'm not thwarting your whole agenda here um, and skipping to something ahead. So you said not suicide, but we definitely have had tears. Part of it is just because um, we aren't familiar with Canvas, and we were jumping in surprised, and so year after year it'll just get better. Um, I love that 
for Canvas. I think it prepares these students for how they're going to be learning in higher education and in the future, even in high school. So I'm all for Canvas and Delphinium. Um, I think some of our frustration and tears today came from the lack of knowledge of how to navigate it. And some things just plain simply didn't work. We kept trying to find videos and they just weren't working. Right? So part of my thing is maybe like, is there some sort of Canvas training? And for me as a parent, I was kind of hoping that there would be a parent out there that I could get your personal number to and I could call you day of and say, help, is it just me? Is it just my system or are you having the same struggles? Because I know things are being posted as we go. So there are going to be kinks that pop up that maybe weren't there last week and I could really use a connection with some people when yeah. the kinks are uh -huh. up. So you can certainly all of you you can certainly use us okay you can send me emails call me text anything all right in order to communicate that or elizabeth henderson all right so she's our support team and uh, that way we we need the feedback so if there are some things that are not working and so on we need that that feedback <laughs> Mm -hmm. Part of the, the training on how to use Canvas, we did that during the, the week zero, the week before the beginning of classes, all right? Uh, and so some of your students were in that week, but others were not, okay? Today, I just did a, a, a meeting with some families that are just starting and we went over some of these, these questions and, and everything on how to use Canvas. So as soon as I can, as soon as I have a second, I'm going to post that video and then um, send it to, to, to everyone, okay, to all our families in order to explain more about both, you know, Canvas, Veracross, all the different systems that we may, may be using. Okay, good, good point. Good question. Mm -hmm. Although I just, I just chatted a link as well to a survey that just quickly ask a couple questions about uh, your access to your to compare accessing content um, from the family school to accessing your content from Canvas. Um, one of the most significant value adds that your students received this year that they didn't last year was all the additional enrichment um, readings and videos and activities and assignments that, um, that connect with the student go videos that they watched last year. That said, those videos are still available where they were before. And so if you're having trouble with accessing content for that day, you can always go back to what you did the, the, the year before and you can click on your, well, you actually can't click on this because this just directs you to Canvas. But if you click on your, if you click on the, um, the calendar, and this is actually, we're gonna have these linking Pablo pretty soon to the lessons. And you click to these, um, these calendar events, you can open up these lesson plans the same way that you did last year, except you'll notice a little bit of a difference. Last year we had two levels and this year we have three. Well, this is the level of video that they're watching in that middle school AHS online experience. And it's arranged similar to the way it's arranged in Canvas. And so if they want to watch the, the video content um, and, they, and they're having trouble in Kansas and it's just, you know, you know it's, it's, the, it's down to the wire and they need to access something, they can access the content through, through family school still. We'll even put their Flipgrid assignment in here if, if it's if it's necessary. I was curious of this group. I was curious to know the response to this particular question. Um, if you if you view that as again, if, if you you know how you feel about those additional resources, and if you just prefer to access content through the FamilySchoolOnline.org, and so I can show you how you've responded here, uh, if you'd like to see. Just three people have responded. I can see this in a little bit. Okay. We can come back to this at another point, but um, 
Yeah. But it, I have I have some questions here in the chat and also Sherry, you have your hand up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, we ended up where we'd been having to use my iPad for part of it and my son's computer for the other part because we couldn't access fully access Canvas through his computer. But today my husband actually figured out that he, we were using um, a different, oh, I don't know what you call it. There's Safari and Google and- the Browser, different Yeah, browser. browser. And he was using a different one on the computer. And so he changed the browser to Google and then Canvas started working on that on the computer. Yeah. Although I still have problems with the Delphinium on my iPad because it keeps popping up that it's a demo and it won't let me let me use it on my iPad. So we've been kind of switching back and forth between different things to, get, to get it working. Yeah. So the, uh, so Canvas works best on a computer with either Chrome browser or Firefox. Those are the, 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 the two browsers that Canvas works the best. In Safari, there are some uh, images that are not shown and things like that. So that is that is just part of how how Canvas works or doesn't work. Okay. Okay. Um, yes, using using an iPad is, you know, uh, there there may be also some compatibility issues with with that. Mm -hmm. Okay, but good 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 observation. Mm -hmm. Okay, Abby. Um, so I had a question about Delphinium because I know for the accredited students, when their instructors put in a grade, then the points go up and that sort of thing. Is there a way that we as parents can have access to mark something like that so that, because part of that whole kind of gamification of the situation, it only, it's less motivating if you can't get credit for a significant portion of the assignments because you're not turning it into the instructor there. Yes, that, thank you so much for that question. I couldn't, I couldn't uh, have a, even put a plant uh, to, to ask a better question <laughs> so than that. Actually, that is uh, going forward, I have we have we have a, a proposal for you, okay? So, and this is this is something that we really want from this focus group: your your feedback and ideas. So, these are some of the things that we could do for this uh, the 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 auditing students, okay? The former Power Hour students. So, one of the options would be to go back to the family school lessons, okay? So basically how we had things last year, accessing the lessons from the, the family school website, meet with the live class with all the students. We still are going to have the, the, the live class with everyone, okay? Record assignments will be accessible in the family school lesson page, but no submission. Basically that was exactly what happened last year, okay? So that is one option. One option would be to go back, okay? The other option would be to continue as we are now, accessing the lessons from Canvas, meet again with, for the live class with all the students. The record assignments are accessible in Canvas, but with no submission. That is what we have now, okay? The third option would be to make the assignments available for grading. And this is, this is how we could do that. Again, the lessons are in Canvas, the live class meets all together, but the record assignments are accessible in Canvas with submission for grading. And we can assign 
the auditing students to small sections of the course. And then we can assign parent volunteers to grade the assignments and give feedback on the assignments to a section. Okay, so we could only do this if we have enough parent volunteers that would be willing to take on the work on grading some students, some of the auditing students, giving them feedback and so on. And so that way the students are, are more motivated, like you said, Abby, to complete the assignments. They have access to, to everything like the other um, students. The difference is that instead of having our learning coaches do the grading and the one-on-one -on -one learning coaching sessions, the parent volunteers do the grading for these students. Okay. So those would be the, the different options here. Okay. So there's no way for an individual parent to do this as opposed to small groups or small sections. What, what do you mean an individual? Parent? So like I grade my own students and put we give could, them we could feedback. Have, yeah, we could have we could have a, a a section as small as your your students, and you grade. You know, you are assigned as the volunteer to grade that section. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So that would be okay. You know. But we would probably, in order to make this work, we would need to have parent volunteers willing to grade more than just their students because not all the parents would be able to grade. Okay. You know, and also, also the, the issue is grading how many courses, okay, to do the grading for. Mm -hmm. Yes. Pablo, is there a way for me to only grade my own student and put their scores on Canvas? Yes. So we could create a section of one. Okay. And then assign you as the TA for that section. Okay. How much work does that take, Pablo? Like, really, the theory, like, I mean, if you think about what if every parent wanted to do this? So uh, what does that for, entail? Yeah, for me, it takes me about depending, of course, on the on the assignment itself. OK, but it takes me about three to five minutes to grade an assignment. If an assignment is an essay or something more involved, it may take about 10 minutes. to grade. No, I meant how long does it take you to set up uh, these sections? Like what if every parent wanted to do this and you had a hundred sections to create for every hundred plus sections to create for every course. You, it, it is actually um, something that we do using um, uh, CSV files. Okay. So oh. once we have the information about which parents uh, want to volunteer and who they want to grade and so on, we can run them in a couple of, you know, so it takes, it takes about probably a few hours to set up and then a second to, to, to load in Canvas. So you could theoretically just set that up regardless of whether they want to or not and just do it yeah. for everybody and then say, hey, if you want to as a parent, grade your, uh, your students' assignments and submit scores and you, you can. Here's a video to teach you how to do it. That's right, yes. Uh -huh. And so we could create in every course a section for every family and assign you know, the parents to be the graders. So now you are assigned to be the observers for your students. We can basically change your role to be a TA for a particular section, and then you would have access just to the students in that section. Hmm. Do they have any control over if they invited somebody else to help grade once they are a grader? You, you, we would need to be controlling that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. Neat. So, but that is also an idea. All right. 
and as as you can see, okay, we we are we don't we are we are interested again on the the students' experience or <laughs> more than anything, you know. Yeah. So most of you have homeschooled your children and 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 done this before. So I think that it would be kind of a natural extension, okay. Um, so that, that is that is uh, something that we could we could create. Canvas has no limit on the number of sections that you can create or how many students are in a section or how few they are. Okay, so technically it all works. All right. In Delphinium, in the learning dashboard, the students, the students would, students would actually, okay, would actually see all the students' performance, all of them, which is okay. That is actually how we want it to to be. Mm -hmm. So they would be able to see the progress of any of all the students there. There. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really helpful. Really helpful. Kristen, are you? Kristen, are you? Do you want to share something? Oh, she's muted now. Mm -hmm. She was popping on off off mute there, uh, yeah. over and over. Um, there was a question that Benty had earlier. Um, maybe it wasn't. Um, so because there, I would enjoy my students submitting work to me through the platform. Mm -hmm. So let me let me launch a little survey. Okay, let me see if I can modify this. Hold on a second. Oh, I see it. Will the videos for age for this age group always be exactly the same as the videos for level two? Level three is actually a different video than level two. It might appear to be very similar because it is, but there's more content. There's about five additional minutes of content in, in, in level three than level two. Okay, hold on a second. Let me let me see if I can edit this. All right. Recording. You mind if I ask a question, Pablo? Go ahead. Uh -huh. I was just wondering about class size. This group is coming from an experience where there were pretty large classes last year, but the, the classes this year right now are about 50% larger than the class size that you were in last year. So that's still a pretty significant increase compared to last year's class size. Mm -hmm. um, how are your students feeling about that? You can chat or you can share. Mm -hmm. Also understanding that it's a new year and so there is a certain element of discomfort getting to know new students not maybe not discomfort that's probably not the right word it probably is the right word for some students but for others just an unfamiliarity that they're that that comes along with with beginning a new school year with a new class and of course that's um, that's that's difficult to evaluate and take that outside of that question but um, we've had some we've had some concerns about class size. Um, you would probably guess from the students who were in our AHS online program last year, who were in, like Dr. Pablo said, much smaller groups. Um, like he said, we did recognize a real um, energy and enthusiasm and participation in the larger classes and uh, the, the former Power Hour classes for middle school and high school that that we thought let's 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 make sure that everybody's having this kind of an experience that is you know that one hour is not about them um, learning from a teacher it's about them learning from each other and so the additional bodies help to promote more participation and and sharing from from students and so that's that was our kind of our reasoning mm -hmm. we should have communicated that a lot earlier than we did but um, but that was the thinking uh, early on um, I see some comments. Class size is all right. Class size is okay so far. Um, girls would like it smaller. There are some kids that float to the front and others don't comment. That's so true, especially you notice that in a larger group than, than in a smaller one. Um, maybe I'll share another, I'll share with you another poll that you can answer while 
Dr. Pablo takes over, I'll just chat you a survey about class size um, right now as well. Thank you. Yes, uh, uh, Camerons, you have your hand raised. Mm -hmm. We were just going to comment. Um, this is our first year doing this um, power hour, power hour um, and, and so on. And so the class size for us, it, it, she gets kind of excited about it and it's kind of fun, but just because it's not mom and dad uh, in the house. So it's more people. <laughs> um, but I think that's, I think it's true that the, the enthusiasm kind of builds upon itself and, and, and that is there within the class. So I think as long as there's a way to kind of try to you know, draw some more out of folks that are newer um, is, is good, but the momentum is always good to, to have the, uh, in, in the in, with the numbers, I would say. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. And, you know, it's always, it's always tricky and it's, it always depends really on the skill of the, of the coach on how to draw more of the students and different students into the conversation. Okay. For example, Mr. Heyman, Rule Heyman, is a master at that. He is absolutely amazing. Uh, you know, he can make rocks talk. <laughs> really. So, um, and, and so there is also a big part of an art to what is class management in an online environment. That is not, not trivial, really. That's true. Yeah, I'm going to launch here, uh, Paul, uh, um, to to have you answer about this proposal, basically. Okay, so the three options on the on the proposal. What would you like uh, to see of of these three options? Actually, I added one more option, giving uh, the idea of of Avi. Avi. Are you drinking mate? <laughs> no, just water. Just water. Oh, I thought I thought that I saw a mate. I'm from Argentina, you know, and I would die for a mate now. <laughs> Sorry. No, that's okay. <laughs> All right. Excellent. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, thank you for your participation. So there in the chat, you, we have this poll going, okay, and in the chat, uh, the two surveys that uh, Peter launched for you to answer, please answer those, they, they are very useful for us, okay, uh, to know what we should do. And then hopefully we can, we can do things better. Okay, of course, we are never, ever, ever going to be able to please everyone because we work with people. So mm -hmm. I hope that that uh, if if we make other choice, other other changes and adjustments to the program that are not your first, second, or third choice, that you are still uh, able to give us a try. <laughs> okay. Excellent. Well, let me share the, the end here of the poll. All right. That we see. Can you all see the result there of the polling for this, this group? Okay, so the majority would like, so the large majority would like actually to make the assignments all available to the auditing students. Okay, and so that would be probably the, 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 the way that we need to go. And initially, I think that it would be okay for us to set the parents as TAs and graders for their own students in their courses. All right. Programmatically, that is going to be actually easier than otherwise. So that is not a, a, a big problem. Okay. You know, Dr. Pablo, it's important to note that even though it's a it's a smaller group, 8%, 15%, those first two options are available regardless of the latter two. So just by 
even if we are able and we do make assignments available for grading either by another parent or by the by the parent of the student they can always go back to family school and access content from there they also we will continue to offer all the content and assignments the way we are now um yeah yeah so so the the, the you know again the, the auditing students it is always a choice to to do the assignments or not so the second option is basically there by default okay whether we make changes or not yeah so all right the cameras you have your hand up yes so um real quick um if we as parents put in grades for classes that they're not uh, getting credit for does that somehow translate into uh, like does ahs keep it on file for like a transcript we can print out at the end of the year or an audit or any of that kind of stuff um just yeah. So the good question. So that is something to make very, very clear. Okay. Middle school is not really counting for credit. Okay. So you start actually producing an official transcript of the student's work in high school. For the auditing students, we cannot create a, a record okay, of their um, grades or things like that, because again, you have the parents grading their children's own assignments. <laughs> okay, so we cannot, yeah. we cannot propose cool. that to be a proof of accomplishment to, to anybody. We would lose our accreditation if we do that. <laughs> okay, and so, this is this is again another way of helping the students be motivated to learn to show you what they are learning receive a grade receive feedback from you okay and continue in their pursuit of education all right mm -hmm. we would not make this uh, option available for a uh, high school for example we couldn't mm -hmm. okay because in high school, then, you know, the, the credits really start counting. We, we, we would need to have a more control about who is who are the learning coaches of the high school students. Having said that, our vision and goal for the future is to create family education centers that are basically distributed smaller groups of high school students and middle school students that are able to receive credit and re are able to, to get feedback and coaching from learning coaches, but it wouldn't be necessarily just the parent giving feedback and grades to their students, okay? We will need to, to set up a little larger sphere of, of influence there. So um, another quick question. So um, now that Power Hour, the middle school Power Hour is called AHS Online, how does that, how is that different from the original AHS seventh grade class online? Excellent question. So same? The, yeah, so the, the, the course is going to be the same the assignments are the same. The difference is that the four credit students, okay, in the middle school class will receive the grading from one of our learning coaches. And they have also access to the one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions. Okay. And gotcha. for those students, we do keep a record of their grades and transcripts and so on in the Veracross system. Okay. The auditing students would have access to the same courses in a separate section of the course, and then they would be graded by volunteer parents. Okay. You, I guess that you could do one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions with your students whenever you want. <laughs> okay. Um, and we wouldn't be keeping track of that in Veracross. Okay. 
That's you could set up um, you could set up um, coaching pen pals on a Facebook group. <laughs> That'd be kind of a fun idea. You know, I mean, you could just create the group and share it with if they want a coaching pen yeah. pal. I mean, does that, does that does that make any sense? Coaching pen pal? I don't know. Yeah, I think you know what I'm talking about, though. Hey, uh, Pablo, do you mind if I ask a question to this group while we have them? I've got to jump on another. A focus group here in nine minutes yes. uh -huh. with our with our power hour families for something similar <laughs> and we're doing something in that younger power hour with those younger power hour classes that i just i just was curious how you how you what you think about this this idea um we're taking about three to five minutes each day we're going to start this uh in a couple weeks once they once they receive them in the mail but we're taking a few minutes each day to have a just a, a quiet reflection time where they record um, where they record in a new journal. It's our power hour journal. And each of these pages inside the journal look like this. So they record the date. This is specific for what they learned or felt during power hours. So it's just a few lines to record something that they learned or felt. And then if there was a challenge, which oftentimes there is in these uh, in these discussions, um, then they could, they, maybe they want to follow through on that challenge, or maybe they think of something else that they want to try to do or become. And then there's always a little drawing section at the bottom, because in our case, we have a lot of students who are, um, who are non-readers, non-writers. And so each page, each day will take a few minutes and, and just take some time to record, to reflect, to record. And then the, t the coach will, will, you know, ask if anybody wants to share you know something that they that they that they wrote and maybe just take a couple a couple um a couple thoughts and a couple shares from the students is that something that you feel would be um beneficial for your middle middle school students and you can just chat how you feel you don't have to say either way whether you like that idea or not. Of course, it wouldn't be a power hour journal. We would just design one for HS online, very similar to that. They'd have kind of a record of some of the thoughts and feelings, things that they learned throughout that year as a, as, as a keepsake uh, specific to that, to that experience. I think the coaches would like it too. Can you imagine quiet time? <laughs> <laughs> five minutes of quiet time pablo how would you feel about that yeah <laughs> <laughs> well, that, think... current, that current journal is just for the power hour kids the k through eight it's not for ahs online yet well it could be right i mean it wouldn't change well, too for, much yes too. for ahs online in many of the classes the 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 classes themselves require the students to keep notes of of this in a similar manner mm -hmm. So we have we have several classes that have assignments that way. Uh, but what do you feel, Pablo, about taking actually having a segment of the of the uh, AHS online live discussion devoted to just quiet reflection and recording? You know, I, I think that that is that is uh, uh, great. OK, in my particular classes, I always have so many things to do and discuss and everything that, that I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't personally as a coach feel, feel that it yeah. would be helpful to, to do that during class. So maybe give them the tool, the resource, the, the tool, journal. Yeah, I always encourage all my students to take notes in a bound notebook like that and, and, yeah. and submit those to, to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm going to jump off, guys. I'm going to leave you with this last survey, and it's just to uh, just to, just an open-ended opportunity to share anything that you feel like wasn't shared or that would be helpful directed directly to a coach, your coaches, um, for improvement. And uh, it's it's anonymous, and um, and we'd love to we'd love to have your your comments there as well. But uh, I'm going to jump off now, and and uh, I just want to thank you for for being here. This was a really good really great group and a lot of good things came out of this hour i felt yeah I, i'm going to stay here so peter your excuse you need to go to the other meeting yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. anybody else that wants to join that one also is excuse or if you don't have any other questions if you have questions stay with me and i'll try to answer 
all your your questions okay so we have we have several things in the chat that i don't think that i have answer or address okay is there anything that you need me to to answer here mm -hmm. you can raise your hand holly mm -hmm. yes um i we just we have been doing power hour last year and now we're moving over to the a ahs and we haven't gotten any I don't know how to get onto Canvas. There's been no directions. We're just kind of hanging in limbo. I don't know how to how to make that transition. Okay. Um, when did you start? Last week. Last week. Okay. So last hour I had a meeting with all the families that I started basically last week to discuss that. And I recorded that meeting. I will uh, send me, give me your email here, uh, and I'll make sure that I send you the, the email for that, okay, for that uh, recording. It explains all about, you know, how to get to Canvas and so on, okay? Okay. Well, I, need, I also need to know how to get into it, because I haven't been given an ID or password or any of that, so. Okay. I I, I think that in that that video I kind of cover some of those those things, but okay, perfect. So let me see. Is that so, Holly? Can you send me that the, the your email? That would be super. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just sent it right now. Oh, okay. All right. So let me see. And what is your your student's name? Kira K E I R A. Mm -hmm. Okay, another thing that I can do for you is I'm going to send you my link to Calendly. Okay, so you can schedule a time with us, with me to discuss that, okay? So, let's see. Okay. So and this is this is for everyone. Okay, anyone who wants to 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 schedule time with me, that is that is the way to to schedule a one on one coaching time with Dr. Pablo. <laughs> 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 I have about 40 per week of this. So <laughs> but wow. I'm always willing and, and able to do them. So let me check your account. Okay. So you said Kiera? Yes. Why? It's K E I R A. K E R I A. <laughs> it's K E I R A. Put it in the chat for me. Vowels in English are my the bane of my existence. Okay. You know. Okay. Yeah, it should be easy. Um, Erwin? No, Olson. Olson. Okay, yeah, I haven't, I don't have, I don't have her yet. Has she done the, the admissions test? No, we haven't done, like, we just signed on to do the power hour, and that's about, I mean, that's, that's about where we're at. I haven't gotten any direction. Okay. So you need to contact Elizabeth Henderson, all right, that was a support team for that. Would that be okay? Yes. All right, let me send you her, con her number. Okay, so let me put that here. Let me put it to everyone. So I go one, three, six, nine, zero, four, eight, three. Okay. So that is uh, the, the phone number for Elizabeth Henderson. She is our basically customer support team. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. And also the schools, the online schools registrar. So she keeps track of all the students. <laughs> all right. Any other question? Anything else? Mm -hmm. No, thank you. Okay, thank you so much. I appreciate your coming and uh, participating in this meeting and sharing your questions and opinions on with us. Okay, the results for the surveys will be very valuable also. Mm -hmm. Thank right. you, Dr. Pablo. Thank you. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.